Hi YouTube, it's your girl Ash and today I'm back with another video and today's video is my final thoughts on season 2A of Shadowhunters. So before we get started, I just want to preface this video by saying that I am a book fan. I devoured all six books in the Mortal Instruments last year because of Cassandra Clare. She helped me to get my foot into other genres that I didn't know, um, that weren't even on my radar to read. That opened me up to my love of psychological thrillers and more urban fantasy. So the books play a special part in my life. And my favorite episode from last season was episode 10, This World Inverted, because it was basically a love letter to the viewers that came because of the book. So let's get right into it. I have notes. Okay, so I want to say that if you have never seen Shadow Hunter season one or season two and you come across this, after this, you might want to um, exit the video and come back after you've watched. But it's best to go into the the Shadowhunters TV show having not read the books at all because your expectations are extremely low and then they have the ability to wow you. But if you've read The Literary Genius, which is Cassandra Clare, if you've dedicated some time to the books, this show will disappoint you. You will have moments of highs, but it will normally be extreme lows so I just want to say that okay so if you haven't read if you haven't watched season one or season two this is where I will say goodbye to you and once you go and watch season one and season two A of Shadowhunters which is available on Freeform come back kick it with your girl here's some of my thoughts but for everybody else who has seen season one and season two, let's get right into my review. So the whole theme of season two was darker. The material was going to be darker. Everything was darker. I did not know that was going to include the lighting. There were times where I got extremely frustrated in season two A of Shadowhunters because I could not see characters in pivotal scenes. I'm like, I felt like I was staring at darkness just listening to voices and that got on my nerves because tv shows are all about the visual so if you can't see anything it takes a large chunk of what your the reason why you're here for the tv show anyway and so it was frustrating it was especially frustrating that they didn't take the money that they saved from giving us little to no lighting and put it back into CGI. Some of the CGI this um, first half of season two was horrible. I mean, do we have to talk about the wings on Ethereal? Like, that was ridiculous. I've seen so many people, like, laughing in review videos on that episode where they showed the wings of Ethereal. Excuse me, it was ridiculous. I'm like, where did this extra money go? Because it obviously did not go to lighting. And I also want to say that the transition from showrunners, because from what I was able to gather on Twitter, is that season two, one through four, was the original um, showrunners. Which I love and be is so bad because season one to me was way better as a whole than season two A has been. I think I gave season two A a D. Like even the finale could not redeem it. And I do have a video especially dedicated to the finale if you would like to hear my thoughts on just that one episode alone. And the transition was so choppy. Like, it it was so clear as day 
it wasn't a smooth transition. You could tell where one showrunner left it and they were working on a completely different storyline and then they picked it up at a completely different storyline. I was just like, this is ridiculous. It should have been smooth. There should have been some work together. It was ridiculous. Okay. A part that I loved, I loved the development of Alec throughout season 2A so far. Forgive me, my likes should have changed. I loved how confident he was. Season 1 was so difficult to watch. Alec struggled so much with who he was and that he was so repressed. And you could see it in his walking, his talking, his mannerisms. And to see a more confident, freer Alec this season so far has been amazing. I just love it. Matthew Daddario is the embodiment of Alec. He is. He puts so much care into the character of Alec and into telling an LGBT story appropriately. I just, I just love him. Okay, let me see. But one thing I didn't like was I didn't like the way that Malik was portrayed this first half this season. Don't promote Malik in every promo. Don't give us every promo is Malik. And then get mad when we have complaints on Twitter that Malik has little to no screen time. It's not our fault. You've set the bar extremely high when you have them in every promo and then sometimes they're not even on the show for like two seconds it seems like before you can blink like the scene is over I did not like that I felt like it was very disrespectful and very manipulative they knew what they were doing they know that the main reason why so many people watch the show and it is what it is. You can get mad if you want. It doesn't matter. It's fact. Most people that watch the show are here for Malik. And you can see that in their pro, their promotion. They're always promoting Malik. It's continual. Even um, the characters on the show that have, excuse me if my camera just cut off. Even the characters on the show, like, you know, Clay's and Sizzy, even they promote Malik online so much and it's like don't do that but I have a rant for that I have a Malik rant also if you want to hear my thoughts on that which I will try to have in the cards or the end screen when the video wraps up okay I'm not a fan of the Izzy Yin Fin storyline which makes me happy that it seems like they're they're about to wrap it up. Because one thing I loved about Izzy, Izzy is my second favorite character in the Mortal Instruments. And one thing I loved about her is that she was strong, loyal. She was a strong woman. She was loyal. And it was, like, aggravating to me to see them bring her down to such a weak human being. And that... They had her treating her brothers like crap. And I did, I just thought the Yin Fin was so stupid. Okay, I thought it was so stupid. I mean, Emma Rod Tubia is doing a wonderful job. She did a wonderful job of portraying addicts. I've lived my whole life knowing addicts. And she did an accurate portrayal and... There's nothing against her acting. It's just, I felt like it was unnecessary. I felt like it was just there just to give Izzy something to do. Like, it wasn't genuinely there because they wanted to tell a story. It was just that we want to give Emma Rod something to do, you know. Because, let's be honest, Izzy has not had much of a storyline at all. Uh, season 1 or Season 2A of Shadowhunters. And... Her storyline really didn't kick in into the, in the books until she got with, spoiler alert if you haven't read the books, okay, until she got with Simon. And I guess they wanted to give her a, a storyline outside of ha 
having it be an actual relationship because it's probably not going to come until maybe the end of season 2B or the beginning of season 3A. And I just felt it was unnecessary. I didn't like it. Okay. Okay, another problem I had with the book, with the TV show, was the introduction of Cleophis. Because in the books, one of the, spe specifically City of Glass, one of my favorite storylines in it is the evolution between Luke and Amadis. The evolution of their relationship. And I have been, so I've been bouncing on the balls of my feet waiting for when we were going to get a madness. And then I find out Luke's sister has been cast. And I'm like, we're getting a madness. I'm super excited. I was ready. And no, we're not getting Luke's sister. But we are kind of. We're getting Luke's sister, but she's going to be Cleophis, who was his mother in the books. And they gave Cleophis, Amadis' whole storyline. Like everything about Amadis in the book was given to Cleophis. And I was infuriated because Amadis plays such a pivotal role in the books from books three down to, to um, City of Heavenly Fire. Amadis plays such an important role in my opinion and so it made me furious that we were getting this second sister Cleophis and mm -mm, I, I was not happy I was not happy at all it's nothing to the woman that plays Cleophis she does she did an amazing job this season it's just that I love canon shadow hunters I love canon the mortal instruments and to see that they took one they took one character that i was so excited to see and made up another character and gave the that character's whole entire arc over to her infuriated me i was mad i was so excited to see amanda's and i know that isaiah mustafa who plays luke has hinted to the fact that we might see a madness, but at this point, there's really no need. Like, you've given her whole entire arc to Cleophis. I mean, and I'm going to get off that because I could rant because that really rubbed me the wrong way. Okay. I was also hoping that we would get to see Idris this season. And there is still an um, opportunity to see Idris. But it doesn't look like it's going to be this season. It really was disappointing when season 2 started. And the focus was not on Idris. Even though I know Idris doesn't come into play until book 3. They really haven't been going by the book though because season one was more book one and book two so i was ex i was assuming which is bad on my part you should never assume but i was assuming that three and season two and three would be three and four which three takes place almost exclusively in idris like and they didn't do that and that was disappointing because idris is a character itself in the book. Like, it's so important to who Shadowhunters are at their core. Like, everything that um is big in the Shadowhunter world almost goes down in Idris. And so, that was disappointing. I'm still holding on to hope that Season 2B will have some Idris or that Season 3 will be in Idris. But at the rate that the showrunners are going. I don't foresee that happening. Okay. Let's get into my... No, I'll do my disappointments. Okay. 
one disappointment for me, one big disappointment. So for this whole entire um, 2A besides Malik was Clary's ruin ability. My favorite part of the book is when they're on the ship and Clary sees the room and she makes it or whatever and the ship explodes and everybody is out in the water and I so was hoping I was so hoping against hope that we would get that scene because I love that scene so much I think it, that's the scene when Valentine first realizes that Clary can make rooms but of course we didn't we got the scene where Clary makes the room to protect herself from getting raped because the warlock woman had locked her in the room and put the demon in to impregnate her. I don't know which episode it is, but I was disappointed on that. Okay, and let me see, because I had one more thing before I get into my final thoughts, which now I'm probably not going to be able to find. Okay. Okay, and I would say I was really shocked that they chose to kill off Clary's mom, Jocelyn, because Jocelyn does play major parts in the book. She plays a major part in the books, especially with her relationship to Sebastian and his like visceral hate if I'm using that correctly his visceral hate for Jocelyn so to see that they would kill off a major major character to me was frustrating because I felt like we're missing prime like we're missing some of the scenes in the book that really got to you when Sebastian would have conversations with Jocelyn and it didn't really affect me, to be honest, because I don't really care for Jocelyn. But it's just the fact that I'm going to miss those moments between Sebastian and Jocelyn that was irritating. Okay. Let me see. Okay, so... So my final thoughts are that overall I would give season 2A of Shadowhunters a D. Not even the amazing finale could raise the grade up. It's just like going through school and coasting throughout your English class. And then at the final you make the highest grade in the class. It's still not going to bring your average up to passing if you've been failing the whole semester. And that's what I felt like it was. I felt like you, they gave subpar episodes the whole season. And then in the season finale, they blew me away. But by that time, it was too late. So I'm hoping that season 2B will have the same momentum that episode 10 had. Because if that would be the case, it will change my whole opinion of Shadowhunters drastically because episode 10 was amazing. Okay, and now let's go to my favorite episodes and wrap this thing up because it is getting long. Okay, so my favorite episodes were, let me see, because I had them in a book. were three and six and ten so yes they still failed because three only three episodes out of ten but this video is really negative but it's very honest to me that's the thing about books and movies and tv shows everything is subjective what i find a piece of art you can find a piece of trash so those are my thoughts on season 2A of Shadowhunters. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media links down below. Don't, and if you feel, 
inclined to do so, please subscribe. Please share this video. It would be graciously appreciated. I'm thankful for everyone who takes the time to share my video. It helps me out a lot. And until next time.